that be church, amen. Amen. Be quiet. Read a few verses here. Yeah, I'll pray for me. I do want to look at one verse before I get started tonight. <clears throat> Isaiah chapter number 49. The Bible says in verse number 15. Can a woman forget her sucking child that she should not have compassion on the son of her womb? Yea, they may forget, yet I will never I will not forget thee. I want you to think about that as you think about these this law that was just passed in New York. I don't know if you heard about it. Saying that they can abort babies up to nine months. And when they when the governor of New York signed that bill today, boy they cheered like they were in a ball game. I don't know if you've seen it. I mean a whole I mean it was just hundreds of people on their feet cheering and uh, saw a picture of the governor signing the bill, <coughs> the law, and surrounding him was people just smiling and, and uh, he was smiling and his wife was smiling and smile, I, I just don't understand. It does not in any way, shape, or form do I see how they can smile, even if, even if they, or they even think, even if they're right, you know what I'm saying? Say we're wrong, which we're not, but say we're wrong, Brother Jim, and they're right, what are they cheering for? What, what, what's, the, what's the happiness because, you know, in their, in their, in their argument, they say, well, you know, if, if a mother is, is, if a young girl is raped or if a young lady, uh, you know, if she's financially or socially in, in, incapable of raising this child, she's doing it for the betterment of that child. Either way, where's the happiness in that? Where's the joy in the fact that a young lady may have been taken advantage of? Where's the joy in the fact that uh, maybe she's so poor that she can't raise a child? Where's the, where's the joy in the fact that maybe she's homeless, she doesn't have a home, she doesn't have any way to take care of the child? Where's the joy in any of that? It's a wicked world we live in. Amen. It's vile. I mean, vile. And tonight, the top of the World Trade Center is lit up in pink in support of this, in celebration of this law being passed. Thousands of people are cheering and praising the fact that they're, they, can, they can abort a baby up to nine months old. They can abort a child up to nine months old, meaning at the day of that child's birth, they can take its life. Saying that the, that a child does not have life until it's, until it's born and takes its first breath. That's when the baby is supposed to have had, that's when life begins for them. Sad, isn't it, folks? I mean, I hate, to, I hate to bring that to you tonight, you know, it's, but I, I want us to understand how... I don't understand the world that we live in. A lot of times, preachers down here in the South, we just kind of, you know, but it's everywhere. Right. They passed it there, they're going to pass it here, here too. And what's sad is, folks, is really, we're not doing anything about it. You know, listen to me. These folks are radical people. You get what I'm saying? To get what they want, they will go to any measure. They'll stand in. They'll stand outside for weeks, protesting, and they'll fight the police, and they'll get sprayed with 
uh, OC spray and water cannons and rubber bullets. They'll, they'll do it. And they'll fight for what they believe. But listen to me, the church is sitting by quietly. I'm guilty. Amen. You, you know, I, I asked my wife today when I was reading this, this law, this, this thing, this article on, on Fox 5's Facebook page, and I was looking at it, and I was like, oh my goodness, you know. And I thought to myself, I told my wife, I said, why? You know, I, I said, you know, I'm not questioning the Lord, but I just want to say, why didn't he just, as soon as that piece of paper, before the ink was dry, didn't he just destroy that building? Why, why, why would we take a chance? Why would, why would we take a chance to let even one of those babies be destroyed? At nine months old. But the Lord has his ways. His ways are not our ways. And our ways are not his ways. But I will say this. Our ways as a human race have, be, have become wicked. We can all. We can all testify to that when you say amen church. Amen. We've let ourselves go, church. It's, it's a sad day. Let's turn to 2 Corinthians tonight. I'm, I'm not going to keep you long. I uh, appreciate you praying for us while we were in Kentucky. Uh, we had a good trip. Uh, we did get some snow. We got snowed in up there. Probably while we're all sitting. Outside riding sleds. Snowball fights and everything. But we had a good time. And we preached. And the Lord helped us. Amen. Are y'all going to be okay? Are y'all with me? Y'all dying? Yeah. Amen. I feel like a plague just came out of this place. <laughs> Second Corinthians chapter number 6. Let's look at verse number 17. I could probably say since I've been here in this church... I've been wanting to preach this message since I've been here. Tonight, the Lord finally gave me peace about it. Amen. Uh, in verse number 17, the Bible says, Wherefore come out from among them, and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing. And I will receive you, and will be a father unto you, and ye shall be my sons and daughters, saith the Lord Almighty. Mm -hmm. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we love you tonight. Thank you. We pray for all that you've done for us, all that you're going to do. I pray God that you'd help us for just a little while, as Lord, as we study your word and look into your word. I pray God that you would look into our hearts, Lord. I pray God that you would reveal things to us that, are, uh, that, that ought not be there, Lord, sin and iniquity. Lord, I pray God that you'd forgive me of my sins and, Lord, my faults and my failures. Lord, where I failed you many, many times, I let you down. Lord, I pray God you'd be with us tonight. Lord, we love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. In these verses here, I see something, a charge to us, a challenge to us as Christians. Amen. As to come out from among the world and be separate, be different. And uh, a few years ago, several years, I guess it's been about seven years ago, the Lord gave me this message for a youth rally up in South Carolina. And it just kind of stuck up there with those young people. And uh, they all, they had, after I preached the message, they came up with a <coughs> slogan called, I'm a weirdo. <laughs> You'll understand why here in just a minute. But they was all, you know, every, everybody was, had, was talking about, it, I'm a weirdo. And what I mean by this is, the Bible tells us, wherefore come out from among the world and be separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing. He said, I will receive, he said, and I will receive you now. You know in scripture that the Lord told us that he said they hated me, they're going to hate you. They didn't accept me, they're not going to accept you. We, we know all that. And we know in Matthew when the, when the young man tells the Lord, I'm going to follow you. And the first thing the Lord says to you is listen to me. He says, foxes have the ends, birds have nests, but the son of man hath not a place to lay his head. He's just pretty much letting you know it's not going to be a bed of roses. It's not going to be easy. 
if you're going to follow me. Amen? Amen. So it's going to be different. And the Lord charges us and challenges us to be separate, to be somebody um, that looks, looks the part, um, is different from the world, is not following in the world's belief uh, system, is not following the world's uh, morals, is not following in the world's fashion sense, is not following the, the world's styles, but that we're someone that when people look at us, that they can tell that we are a Christian. Amen. When someone, when they talk to us, they can tell by our language, they can tell by our vocabulary, they can tell by our attitude that we are a Christian. Amen. So we see here that he said, come out from among the world and be separate. So what I, what the title of my message tonight is being a weirdo for Jesus. Being a weirdo for Jesus. Say, what in the world do you mean, preacher? This is what I mean. The world looks at us as weird. Wouldn't you say that? Yeah. Somebody that, I'm talking about somebody that is a devoted, a devout Christian, somebody that really takes the stand, somebody that really, when put to the test, is, is a true testament and a true testimony and a true example of Christianity. Man, the world will look at them and say they are just plain weird. Yeah. How so? We ought to be weird statistically. Now, I didn't write any statistics down tonight. I used to, I, I used to have a big list of a bunch of statistics, you know, on, on drugs and alcohol and things like that. And I'm sure since I preached this that it's gotten worse. But we ought to be weird statistically. Statistically, our our homes should be different, preacher. Right. Amen. Amen. Our children, our 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 churches. Now, there's a lot of things that we don't have control of, but in our Christian life, listen to me. Our young people should be different than the world. By the grace of God, me and my wife married, we were both pure. That's something I'm proud of. Yeah. Man, that's something she's proud of. That's something, when Brother Tony Shirley married us, he made a big deal about that. I remember, preacher, this is funny. We went up to preach. I went up to preach at a youth meeting in uh, North Carolina. And there was this little bluegrass group there. Some teenagers. Probably about 14, 15, 16 years old. Apparently one of the guitar players was shacking up with the singer. 16 years old. They was in the back pretty much making out the whole time I was preaching. But I, I, I started, I was, tell, I was telling about how by the grace of God my, me and my wife were, were pure when we got married. They started laughing. Now this is the group that came to sing. And y'all know me. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Thank God I'm a lot different than I was when I first started out. I just kind of eased back there to where he was and asked if there was something funny if he'd like to tell the whole church. You know? But I want us to understand something like when people look at our young people, when they look at Tony, Tiffany, Noah, Kenneth, let me just say our young adults, because they get mad at me for saying our young people. <laughs> they ask me, Kenneth came up and they said, when are we going to stop being teenagers? I said, when y'all stop acting like teenagers. <laughs> Our young adults, our college and career age. It's a blessing to me that they have a testimony. Amen. Mm -hmm. I from, from Grace Baptist Church, they can say they've been here for years. Tony has the testimony of 
coming in on our buses, getting saved. And now he's teaching a Sunday school class, doing children's church, seeing people saved. Amen. That's weird for people his age. Y'all get what I'm saying? Statistically, he's different. Amen. Statistically, when the world looks at, at Brother Tony, they're thinking, man, he's a weirdo. He would rather spend his time at church. He would rather spend time in his Bible. He would rather, instead of going to watch a ball game or instead of going to get drunk, instead of going to a party in Athens, instead of doing those, he would rather be in a youth meeting somewhere <coughs> at a youth rally listening to somebody preach and listening to somebody sing about how good God is. Do you understand? To this world, that is extremely weird. They might but even say something's wrong with him. They would probably throw a bunch of those letters together out of the alphabet and make up some new dysfunction he's got. I've never seen so many in my life. ADD, ADHD, elemental P. I mean, they've got a ton of them. But that's what, you know, they, they probably have something for, for church kids now. I wouldn't doubt it. Listen, if they're killing babies at nine months old, they think there's something wrong with us. Amen. Statistically, we should be different. Statistically, preacher, we shouldn't, our kids and our young people and our preaching style is different. When I have, well, y'all know Drake. My buddy that I used to bring, he loved preacher. He said, man, I ain't never heard anybody preach like that. He said, I thought he was going to explode. <laughs> but you know what he liked? It. You know what he said? He said, I like it. It's different. Amen. He said, it don't put me to sleep. Amen. Apparently, he sleeps a lot in church. <laughs> he said, it don't make, he said, I, I, he said, it's exciting. They, these are words, he's, these things he's telling me. And I'm sure the thought went through his mind at first. Man, this place is weird. This ain't like my church. I'm not going to say where it goes. But this place ain't like my church. It's weird. I used to think Christians were weird. Preacher, you remember that when you were a kid? You go to church, you get drunk to church. There's that lady. It's always got a cough drop covered in lint. She gives it to you out of the bottom of her purse. But you always keep going back for more. And she's the one that's sitting up there praising God. And you think, man, she's weird, but I like her. You know? We ought to be, we ought to be different. We ought to be weird. That's what we're called to be. Amen. Because the, the world's normal. Amen. They're normal. Isn't that crazy? How backwards is it? How backwards is it, man? Let me tell you something they did. This is real, okay? It's really happened. And nobody was locked up for it, which blows my mind. That was a nine-year-old boy. There's a nine-year-old boy. I want to say maybe Canada. He's Canadian or something. I want to say, I want to say he's, not, he's nine years old, preacher. He's a superstar. You know why? He's not, he don't play ball. He's not a ball player. He's not a wrestler. He, he, he don't play sports. You know why? He's a drag queen. Nine years old. Posed. Posed with an adult nude male in a magazine. And everybody's praising. Nobody went to prison over it. Nobody went to jail over that. The world is praising it, man. Look at the look at the look at the growth with, that we're making from the old days. All this toxic masculinity talk. Can't even let a boy be a boy anymore.
But look at my kid. He's over there rubbing his shoes on his face right now. <laughs> Have y'all seen that commercial? <coughs> New Gillette commercial. Preacher talks about how toxic masculinity is ruining the world. Can't let boys wrestle in the yard anymore. Don't teach them how to fight. Defend themselves. Let's teach them how to hold hands and be friends. Now, I'm going to teach my son how to treat a lady. Or God help his soul. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. I'm going to teach him how to talk to a young lady the right way. If he goes to pick one up, he better knock on the door and talk to her daddy first. Mm -hmm. I'm going to teach him if he ever bullies somebody, I'm going to show him what bullying is at the house. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. But if he and his cousins want to wrestle in the yard and fight and get bloody noses and throw rocks at each other, well, that's fine. Amen. Amen. I promise you, it'll quit whenever one of them gets hurt. It's self-corrected. You just let them do it. One of them will get cracked and say, all right, I'm done. I get it. This world is sick. That's their normal. It's so backwards. It's so backwards. Now people don't want to come here preaching. Preacher tells me all the time, he, he said, I remember when I was younger, he said, I feel bad, so bad for you younger preachers. Because because he, he said, we, there was a day when people enjoyed to come here preaching. Mm -hmm. They were excited yeah. about preaching. Mm -hmm. They could take or even, listen, they could take or leave the music. They wanted to hear God's man preach. Mm -hmm. Now, now, you know, everybody's got to check their phone or if they even show up now. Thank God for those of y'all that are faithful. Amen. That do come to hear preaching. Thank you. Amen. But this world is messed up. Yes, it is. And I just want us to take a firm, more firm stand on the things that we believe. I want to encourage us tonight because there's it's coming. It's getting worse. It's going to get worse before it gets better. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's sad that today that Young boys, you know, they don't know how to fish or hunt. You know, even, listen, I'm only 28 years old, church. But I remember, I, we didn't have phones and stuff when I was a kid. I mean, that's just how long a little ago it's been. I, we didn't have a game. And it was trees, dogs, creeks, all day in bicycles, man. All day long. Now you, I'll tell you something funny. We was uh, a couple of the deputies at, at, at where I work said that they were they were talking in the uh, uh, in the deputy room. We were about to have shift change for a drink. They were on there talking. They said that this lady keeps calling about these kids. Keeps calling about them. They don't know what they're doing. One of them's going to get hurt. They go out there. It's literally just kids playing in the yard. That true story. <laughs> Deputy pulls out and says, what y'all doing? Playing football. Y'all ain't doing nothing else. No, I'm just playing football. Who lives here? We do. This is y'all's yard. Yes, sir. You're just playing ball. All right, <laughs> carry on. You don't see that anymore. You used to be able to pull through a subdivision, there'd be a basketball hoop that somebody's 
somebody's parent bought and put on, out on the road, and there'd be 30 kids out there playing ball, waiting on them, who's next? I got my five, who's next? Uh, uh, but not anymore. It's weird, isn't it? We're weird because we believe in those type of things. We, we're weird because we believe in purity until marriage. We're weird because we believe in coming to church. We're weird because we still love Sunday school. Amen. We're weird because we still love church singing. We're weird because we still love preaching. We're weird because we still use a King James Bible. Somebody say amen. amen. Even church, sure, hey, listen, don't let it fool you. Even some churches think we're weird. Yep. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. We ought to be well, weirdos statistically, not only that, specifically. What do you mean, preacher? It says, come out from among them. Be separate, saith the Lord. The Lord pointed at a specific group of people and said, come out from among them. Specific. Touch up the unclean thing. We ought to be specific about what we believe. Our King James Bible, our type of music, the type of preaching that we like, the type of singing that we like, the type of clothes that we wear, we ought to be specific. Amen? We ought to be specific. Oh, hang in here with me. It's just a baby girl. She's on her. She ain't old enough to get whoopings yet. <laughs> Mama might be peachy. But we ought to be specific in the things that we believe, preacher. Amen? You know, when me and, when I was uh, first talking to a preacher about coming over, you know, we went to Applebee's. Amen. Broke some bread. <laughs> Thought preacher was going to die. He got choked. You remember that? Yeah. I thought I, he literally stood up, and I thought I'm going to have to hide with him. I've never met him. I did. I thought I've never actually sat down and talked to him, and I'm about to have to save his life. <laughs> He's standing up. Then he goes, "I'm good." I was like, "What happened?" He said, "I just got choked on a piece of steak." Well, Amen. But we talked. And he wanted to know what I specifically yes, believe. Yeah. What my beliefs were in church growth and you know where you see a church in today's society, you know, all those things. There's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. We gotta be specific about what we believe. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because, maybe not to us so much, but to a lost world, those little things make the difference. Amen. Here's, a, here's an example. There's a preacher that comes to our jail and preaches, and he ain't no count. Stuck back everyone is listening to him. Now these men are in a vulnerable state. They're, some of them, are, they really want some help. Okay? A lot of them, this is it for them. They're about to go a long ride. Yeah. We're talking 20, 30, 40 years, some of them. They're looking for something. And if you go in there and you're telling them something that's just completely wrong and against the Bible, but it's you're throwing God's name in it and you're throwing Christ's name in it, and they think, well, it must be right because he's got a Bible. And he's talking about God. He's talking about the Lord Jesus Christ. So it must be right. So let me just believe what he's talking about. Mm -hmm. we got to be specific. Amen. That Jesus Christ was born of a virgin. Mm -hmm. Amen. He died. Rose again. Was, listen to me. We ha and he's coming back again. We believe the King James Bible because all the other versions are perverted. It takes things out and it adds things in that all not be there. Listen, we ought to we believe it. We believe that the blood of Jesus Christ is the only way to heaven. Yep. That works ain't going to get you there. Church attendance ain't going to get you there. Tithe is not going to get you there. We believe in salvation by grace through faith. We have to be specific about what we believe in. Amen. Especially in this day and time that we're living in. Lastly, and I'm done. We need to be a weirdo steadfast. 
1 Corinthians 15, 58. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as you know that your labor is not in vain. Mm -hmm. When I got called to preach, I made that my life's verse. 1 Corinthians 15, 58. Steadfast, unmovable, always abounding yeah. in the work of the Lord. Yes, sir. For as much as you know, your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Yeah. Today is the day to be steadfast mm -hmm. in what we believe. Right, not many at all, preacher. Yeah. Yeah. Listen to me, either, either age is getting our believers world, sin, immorality. People, some people are just getting tired. Some people are getting tired of being like Noah. The rain's coming. The flood's coming. It's coming. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you it's coming. Mm -hmm. You don't think Noah and everything get tired? Building that of that big giant boat preaching all of them years and not a single drop of water and he's talking about rain and everybody and nobody even knows what rain is it's never happened before y'all get what I'm saying that would be like me walking out here and saying listen church I promise you pizza is going to start falling from the sky <laughs> I hope it's that good kind. Most especially. Nice. That real pizza. <laughs> but it's going to start falling. Promise, y'all. Promise. Y'all would think I'm insane. It's never happened before. Pizza's never fell from the sky before. All of a sudden, you get in your truck started up, bam. City. Anybody ever been to New York City? Yeah. If you ever get the chance to go there, there's a few places you need to go. Cat's Deli. Get you a deli sandwich, some cheesecake, amen. <laughs> and just about any pizza place you see, the one that's got the, it's turning in there, and there's a pizza in there that's about this big. <laughs> and they'll say, two dollars for a slice and a drink. And that slice is about that long. <laughs> Amen. So it's amazing. I didn't care about nothing else. We was on that we was on that mission trip in New York. I was I was eating all the food. I was like, y'all just go on and see the Statue of Liberty. I'm gonna sit here and hold this pizza place down. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> I was wandering around the city, being cold, eating everything we could find. <laughs> cold didn't gain a single ounce, and I came back 30 pounds heavier. <laughs> Funny story about that, now, and I'll end, I promise. We were up there in November. Is that Memorial, is Memorial Day in November? No. <laughs> Veterans Day. It's Veterans Day Parade in New York City. The Veterans Day Parade. All right, they had blocks shut down. There was helicopters, snipers everywhere. This is no lie. We had these flyers that looked like they were very patriotic. They were tracks. All right, we've passed out thousands of tracks since we've been there. Well, me and Cole both had two backpacks. <laughs> and filled with these tracks, all right? We're standing there behind this barrier. Okay, this is me and Cole Russell, all right? You just have to get that through your mind. Cole looks at me and says, do you think there's a way we can get in this parade? <laughs> I said, Cole, this is on live television, worldwide. We're in New York City. We are not in Marion, all right? So here comes these folks from U-Haul had a flood. They're dressed in regular clothes. 
What do we do? Ease out of that barrier. <laughs> Start walking. We handed out them flyers, out, but people's gra I mean, people are grabbing stuff because people are throwing candy and yeah. coupons, whatever for their whatever. And 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 man, me and Cole's just. I mean, we're just giving them out. We're walking, and all of a sudden we see NYPD <laughs> looking at us, pointing at us. I was like, Cole, it's time. <laughs> we're busted, man. Let's go. So they're looking at us. They're trying, you know. They're, you know, they're not trying to cause a scene. Me and Cole, and then we just <coughs> dip out, and we're gone. <laughs> Brother Jason said, "How did y'all hand out three thousand tracks that fast?" <laughs> I was like, you get in a parade like we did. <laughs> <laughs> and it ain't that hard. They're like, you did. We did. It was awesome. It was so much fun. If we went to jail, it probably wouldn't have been so much fun. We had a blast. Amen. But listen, we got to be different, okay? Yeah. We got to be different. Yes. And I know that you've heard it, I've heard it <coughs> preach millions of times the same type message same scripture but here's the thing our society is getting worse it's getting more wicked getting more vile our churches are falling apart our homes are falling apart and like I said they just voted to, to begin killing Nine-month-old babies. Nine months. I'm talking about a baby that somebody would be taking hold of. All right, and they're killing them. And they were just ecstatic. All of them on their feet, cheering. I mean, you would have thought they just ended slavery. You'd have thought that they just allowed women to start voting. You would have thought that it was the change, uh, I mean, uh, of the world. You'd have thought that, that it was a Martin Luther King speech. There was, I mean, they were shouting and cheering and just smiling. And here, and I don't mean anything by this, but besides this. And, and it was mostly women, which makes me so confused, church. I'm not saying women are wicked. I'm not talking about, I'm just talking about a mother has a maternal sense that I will never understand. I love my kids, but listen, a mother has, a, has, a, has that instinct and that something inside of them to, to love and nurture children. And for them to be praising the fact that they could now kill their nine-month-old babies. It's unnatural. Yeah. Why didn't they preach it? Why didn't they pass a law to stop funding that? To start funding adoption? Amen. Why? I'm almost done. I'm just getting out. I'm trying to end. Why is it that my friends who can't have babies have to pay tens of thousands of dollars yeah. to adopt a child? But you can go in a clinic for free and have a nine-month-old baby murdered. Amen. And we're weird. Yep. We're the weirdos. God help us. I'm getting angry. I better quit. Let's all stand.